Okay, we're recording. And it's 2.30. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this a special Cowichan Community Center meeting for July 8th, 2021. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge that we are all on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people. And with that, I would ask for an approval of the agenda. Has somebody move the approval of the agenda? Tom, seconded by Al. And if we go straight to uh, adoption of the minutes from June 10th, 2021. Somebody would be moved that if there are questions on that. Seeing none, it's been moved. Is there a seconder? Moved and second. Is there any business arising? I don't believe so. Do we have any public input, Miss Chris Annapolis? No, not today. Thank you. And we move directly to reports and I move to R1 and I believe it's Rob. Okay. Yes, Madam Chair, I can introduce this one. Thank you. Uh, awesome. so background, the CRD informed BC assessment of the Duncan Dynamics Agreement uh, as we are required to do so by law. Uh, this resulted in a property assessment and tax bill by the municipality of Mount Couchin for approximately $18,000 as the club was assessed as a class six business as per their classification. Uh, and their current tax status is not eligible for an automatic tax exemption under the act that we've recently learned. Uh, we understand the club was not prepared for this bill and has reached out to us for support. Um, there is language in the agreement that requires them to pay uh, taxes, including property tax. Uh, we presented four options in the report for your consideration. If there is support, uh, staff are recommending option one is it may provide the most equitable solution while respecting the existing lease agreements. And just quickly to summarize option one, it's essentially uh, the CBRD agreeing to cover uh, our $4,300 portion of the bill through uh, grant and aid funds under electoral area D&E. Uh, the municipality of North Cottage would need to consider uh, providing a grant for their portion of the bill at around $9,300. And then the club would be um, required to pay the, re the remaining $4,000. And so moving forward, we're working with BC Assessment right now. Natalie's been in touch with them on the club's uh, tax uh, classification and looking to work with them on possible uh, reduction exemption opportunities for the bill. Uh, however, there's no um, guarantees that we'll be successful with any of those. So back to you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, go ahead, Director Sebring. I have a couple of questions and some observations, I guess. Uh, my first question is why is this coming from D and E grant and aid funds as opposed to some of the other electoral areas. Why did we, why did we uh, pick them in the staff recommendation? That's question one. Natalie, do you want to? Mr. Williams, go ahead. Or, or, or um, Mr. Seabring, um, uh, Alzinga. <laughs> uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and I'll I'll take a shot at this and then ask for uh, Ms. Wainer to comment, but. Uh, Areas D and E are obviously core uh, electoral areas to the Couch and Community Center. The other electoral areas are not, so uh, uh, that's why it was selected as the recommendation. Okay. Follow up, Dr. Se Sebring. Se second question: um, Why all of a sudden did we register this lease on title when this lease has been there since my God, I don't know, almost as long as I've been on the commission, and all of a sudden this triggers this. Um, what what changed? Uh, who from staff would want to take this? Um, Ms. Wainer, go ahead, please. Through the chair to Director Sebring, it's always been a requirement that these agreements been sent off to BC Assessment. And uh, there was questions that started originally two years ago with the Salt Air Community Center. And so it started then. And from that point on, we've been making sure that all these agreements are going into a BC Assessment. We sent this one in in September of 2019, but the agreement didn't start and come into effect till December 23rd, 2019, which was after that year's, the 2020 year tax roll closed, which gave it another year, which is why it's a year later. I have been on the phone with BC Assessment and I've had confirmation that they're looking at doing a supplemental that to reclass this as a class eight, but that will just reduce the taxes. The tax bill will not go away. Reduce it to, to how much? 
it should go down approximately. I wouldn't know. North Cowichan calculates the tax bill, but my estimate from quick like talking to the CFO over there, it's about one third of what it is now. So probably anywhere between six and seven thousand would give me a little bit of leeway. I mean, for, from our perspective, I can make a couple of comments and then I'll cede the floor. Um, we are not in a position to to give them a ninety three hundred dollar grant. I mean, it's just just not there. Our our grant and aid budget is dry. I think we've got like twelve hundred and fifty bucks left in it. Um, and you know, it just I mean, they can apply for a permissive tax exemption next year because they may well fall fall under our guidelines. In which case, the whole thing is forgiven. But uh, for this year, they're you know, and and. The other thing I don't understand is where does that ninety three hundred dollars come from? If the bill is eighteen thousand less four and change from these two electoral areas, by by my calculation that leaves thirteen and change. And and somebody said ninety three hundred for North Couch. And uh, what what's that? Go ahead, Ms. Weiner. Through the chair to Director Sebring, ninety three hundred would be the portion that would be the equivalent to North Couchin's portion of the tax bill. If the 44, another 4,400 dollars was split um, with between the electoral areas, there would still be about 4,000 dollars left outstanding that would have to be paid for by Duncan Dynamics. Well, I mean, the, the way this looks, there's going to be 13,000 left to be paid by Duncan Dynamics because I'm telling you right now, based on my conversations with staff, we we don't have the money to do this. So, but that's not your problem. That's just the reality. Ms. Weiner. Through the chair to Director Sebring, um, I agree with the 9300 with the new tax bill and the supplemental coming. The overall bill, the total bill is going to be coming down to probably approximately max, uh, around 7,000, six to $7,000. So it'll be significantly reduced, but I don't know what the split will be at that point. Right. Okay, thank you. So is there anyone else? Um, uh, Director Nicholson, go ahead. Okay, so so we know that the the tax bill will come down to around six or seven thousand dollars. Do we, Ms. Weiner, through the chair to Director Nicholson? I can't guarantee the amount because unfortunately the CBRD doesn't t send out tax notices. North Cowichan is the one that does the calculation of that. All I can confirm is that there's a supplemental request coming that will bring it down to uh, class eight, and I know. I was told for the rate, it's like 3.3, where the current tax rate for general municipal is 9.17. I don't know for the rest of them of what it will come in at. But to be clear, that's for next year, not this year, right? No, that's for this year. The oh. supplemental is coming in for the 2020 tax year. So this bill will be reduced to between approximately six and seven thousand dollars. Okay, okay so that's that that's for sure. So that's that's a good thing. So um if that's the case, I, I certainly I certainly don't mind doing a grant and aid from Area E to help offset the cost, but I'd like it to be done fairly. And um, I don't see where Duncan plays into this, frankly. Um, yeah, so so maybe maybe this is premature if we have a supplemental thing coming in. Is this premature to to do this, Mr. Elzinga? Uh, my answer to that I'm going to, be here to Director Nicholson, um, and I'd be looking for Ms. Weiner's support because I know there was some timelines around this. So there was a September 1st deadline for uh, uh, when we were initiating this conversation. I don't know if that's still in play with this supplemental uh, development. So maybe Ms. Weiner can comment on timelines. Go ahead, Ms. Weiner. Um, through the chair to Director Sebring, I can't confirm, but as I would expect, it's probably still the September 1st deadline for when the taxes would have to be paid before there would be a penalty. Yeah, that's that's what our council passed a few months ago. We did the alternative tax by law. Go ahead, um, Director Duncan. Thank you. Yeah, I'm uh, also like Director Sebring. I'm a little confused how we, you know, how this is coming up now. Uh, because I do recall, I think these guys have been in the center since at least 2009, possibly 2010. What happened in the prior years? They just paid the bill or or I'm confused how suddenly they, there's a big tax bill and they've been around for over a decade as far as I can figure out. 
think they went under the radar until we decided to check about the salt air community center. So everything was under the radar. There was nothing that was wrong. It they just weren't um, found out. So now that we have highlighted these issues, this is what has come out of it. So now they have the same responsibility as all the other um, community center. Go ahead, Mr. Elzinga. And just for the commission's awareness, um, we're not sure what other organizations may be impacted in the future. So as this has, as you're quite correct, gone under the radar, this is now the second user group. We're not sure of what other ones. My understanding is Ms. Wainer will be talking directly to BC Assessment uh, in the next uh, little while here about impacts on other organizations in CVRD facilities. Director Sebring. Just a question, how did the salt air thing get resolved? Did that did the organization that's leasing that building just swallow the whole tax? Ms. Wainer? Through the chair to Director Sebring, the Recreation Society is responsible for paying the taxes on that building and they have been paying the taxes for, um, and that's for the daycares portion. Follow up, Director Sebring? Well, no, I, I just, you know, I mean, that to me, that kind of set the, a bit of a mental precedent and I understand, you know, we want to keep gymnastics affordable for the kids, but if the folks up in Saltaire are not coming cap in hand to us for grants, um, it, it kind of begs the question in some sense, because like I say, that sets a bit of a precedent. I don't know, I'm just, I was just curious. Thank you. I don't mind from area D's perspective for the 2000 and hopefully I have it in, in my grant and aid. Um, like, I don't mind for this year because this is quite the bill to be all of a sudden sprung on on them. And I'm sure that they'll be aware for the following year. So I don't mind supporting from um, area D. Go ahead, Director Nicholson. Yeah, as long as it's clear that it's a one time helping hand type of thing, I am. I am a little bit. Um, I guess I need more information on whether this is actually a business, a for-profit business, or whether it is a not-for-profit. Um, Wayner, because I, I haven't given a grant and aid to a business before. <laughs> Through the chair to Director Nicholson, um, we are unable to give grants and aid to businesses. So we've done a search, and this is a society. It um, comes out of the not-for-profit society, so that's already been checked out. I do. Um, also recommend that if a grant aid was given and to ensure that maybe this doesn't go forward in future years, there's proof given that they've applied for a permissive tax exemption to help in future years. And the deadline for that is August 1st. Okay, right, Director Sebring. Yeah, just to come back to the numbers and, and I'm, I'm um, just mentally doing some math here. If they're successful in the reclassification to, I think you said class eight, Natalie, uh, and the bill comes down to seven thousand, and we put in the the uh, the forty three hundred from the two electoral areas. By my calculation, that leaves a little under four thousand left on the bill. Is that kind of the way we're looking at this? Trainer, um, I do know one electoral area does not have uh, twenty two hundred dollars if it was split evenly um, between the two electoral areas. I think there's less in electoral area D. I'm just looking to see how this was going to be funded without having the tax notice in front of me. I am I unable to say how much is say North Cowichan's portion versus what's CVRD portion without the updated tax notice. Well, somebody came up with that ninety three hundred dollars on the on the existing bill. Um, you know, I mean, if it's if it's a straight percentage piece and it's eighteen thousand, you can probably figure that the North Cowichan portion would be forty five hundred on on the new bill. Or you know somewhere in, in that neighborhood, if the percentages are consistent. Victor Nicholson, I, I'm still not clear why Duncan doesn't contribute. Yeah, what's the matter with you, Tom? Director Duncan, <laughs> not contributing. Oh, Mr. Alzinga will help us out with that. We have already done all our grants for the year, and we're just like uh, like you, Al, our, uh, Director Sebring. We've we've bled the pot dry. Okay, Mr. Elzinga. 
So again, I would be looking for Ms. Weiner to comment, but my understanding is that the $18,000 current bill that Duncan Dynamics would be paying would be to North Cowichan and a CBRD portion, as well as school tax and uh, a couple of other recipients as you normally would on a uh, property assessment. So the city of Duncan is not receiving any of that funding. Uh, North Cowichan and the CBRD would be. And Ms. Weiner, is that your understanding? Ms. Weiner? Through the chair, yes, um, Mr. Elzinga is correct. The property tax bill, which is done by North Cowichan, the funds go to North Cowichan have several portion. One is for the general municipal portion, which is North Cowichan, and then there's the CBRD and the CBRHD, and those are the portions. There's nothing on there. There's no breakdown because they do not collect on behalf of North of Duncan. That's their own property tax notice. Okay, what is the committee's pleasure? I think that area D, E, and E are in. I, I guess I'm not in for the full 2200. What do I have left, Ms. Weiner? $912. Oh, that's not fair. Whoopsie. And don't you have any in reserve? Are, are there any offered? No? I, okay. I, have, I have a really small grant and aid budget that I've had in the 14 years that I've been here. I don't have very much, and, and I thought I would be close. So. I, don't have, I don't have very much either, but maybe you could, you could fund one of my uh, things next year. Like, I don't know. I just gave five hundred dollars for the annual river uh, celebration in September. Yeah, and so you know, maybe you could think about doing some of those things that I like to do. Yeah, well, I <laughs> in was. exchange in exchange for me picking up the slack here, because honestly, that's a big bill for me then. Okay, Ms. Weiner. Um, just for some clarification, are we looking at doing it by percentage basis, like North Cowichan still covers for um, 4,500 with the electoral area directors, or is it looking that the whole bill is covered by the electoral area directors? Um, I was just looking for some clarification. Uh, just for clarification, North Cowichan isn't covering anything. Just be clear on that, okay? And I thought okay. I made that clear at the outset. Thank you. All right. So it looks to me that we have an agreement with, I mean, whatever mine, I was gonna do the river one, but if that, I can put that 900 into this gymnastics and I don't know what, so that's what I will agree to. And I don't know what Director Nicholson, go ahead, Ms. Weiner. Um, through the, to the chair, what the original pro proposition was that uh, Duncan Dynamics would pay a portion of this. So that could be discussed as well. Director Sebring. Is it premature to have a motion with actual amounts pending this um, application to reclassify to class eight? Should we should we instead do a, a, a more generic motion that says uh, areas D and E will split the regional district portion uh, in a way to be determined rather than than throwing, you know, a hard number at it because at the end of the day, if it comes down to six to seven thousand dollars, that forty three hundred is probably going to be considerably more than what the CBRD portion of the bill would be, right? Just, just the thought. Ms. Weiner, through the chair, Sebring, yes, that, that would be a great recommendation to. I would support stating that that would just cover the CBRD and and the CBRHD portion, or yeah. is it? Would, yeah. Go ahead, Director Sebring. Do you want to make that recommendation? Yeah, um, and I'm not quite sure how to how to wordsmith it, but you know, the motion something to the effect that uh, areas D and E agree to between them cover the CBRD and CBRHD portions of the tax bill for the Duncan Dynamics Gymnastics Club, uh, pending the reclassification of the property to Class Eight. Uh, that, and that way, you know, we don't put any numbers in the in the motion. It just keeps it a little bit cleaner, and you're not out quite as much money between the two of you. Hopefully. Okay, uh, Mr. Elzinga. Um, if I may take the liberty of adding a couple things on to uh, Mr. Sebring's thought uh, to say that. Uh, 
without putting numbers in there, um, that the area D and E do it in equal proportion up to the available funding limits of their individual grant and aid. I like that wording. I haven't got a seconder for the motion yet, so it's not an amendment. Sure. What, okay. What, what, uh, Director so, Nicholson. Could, could John explain what he means by that? I didn't understand. So, in my opinion, um, the intent from staff's recommendation that D and E would be putting money in in equal proportion. And uh, so, I believe the way that I heard uh, Director Sebring start the motion was that the CBRD funding would be by the two electoral areas. And I don't think it's equitable for area E to cover any shortfall that area D doesn't have with insufficient funding. So um, without putting exact numbers in, what I'm hearing is we've talked about $900 that uh, area E shouldn't be putting in more than that if area D is not. And so I, I wouldn't wanna see something you know, for next year or some sort of reciprocation outside of this situation. So um, we don't know what the new tax bill will be, but realistically the intent is from, from my thought is the electoral area should not be funding more than $1,800 then. Yeah. Okay, so with that motion, it would actually state that without the number in it. So that was a yeah. friendly amendment. Oh, actually it's been moved, but it was not seconded. Can I say something before we go ahead? Um, I'm just wanting to uh, point out we do have other options here uh, in the staff report. I'm wondering if we want to look at using function 420 for programs and events or CBRD strategic priorities fund. And then you get keep your grant name. Go ahead, Ms. Wainer. Through the chair to the director, I would recommend against the 420 as we have an agreement in place and that would be going against the agreement, which states that they would be paying the property taxes. If it came, it would um, set precedent for other areas and other agreements. Thank you. Okay, so um, did I, I don't believe, did I get a seconder to that? I didn't get a seconder to Director Sebring's motion. Now it is second. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to call the question. Is there any more discussion on that? I'm going to call the question. All in favor? And Director Sowery, you can just say yay or nay. Yay. Opposed? Okay, okay thank you. Uh, so that is unanimous. Okay, Mr. Alzinga. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just as a follow up, uh, uh, my understanding from Ms. Wainer is that we are encouraging Duncan Dynamics to seek a permissive tax exemption for 2022 as well, and we'll be communicating that to Duncan Dynamics. Thank you so much. So we have no unfinished business, no new business. Do we have to do question period with this meeting as well? All righty. So I request a motion to adjourn. Moved and second. Director Sebring, you had a question? I just got an email from my CAO who's been talking to somebody over there uh, with the actual numbers just to give everybody some comfort as we adjourn. The uh, taxes will drop from 18000 to 7600 if the application is successful for Class uh, 8. And uh, 1795 is the CBRD portion. So that that 1800 that that 900 Woo! bucks just hey. covers that. Wow. And, uh, North Carriage's portion is 3,400 and the remainder is 2,300. So, or 2,400. So there you go. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. Um, motion to adjourn, been moved and seconded. All in favor, opposed if any. Thanks so much. Have a good Goodbye. summer everybody. Yes, you too. Well, we'll see each other next week. <laughs>